we have gathered once again for another exciting edition of Wake Up Anche Valley. It is the 18th day of May 2022 and it's Wednesday. Yes, it's Winnie Wednesday, and uh, in the interest of full disclosure, I'm going to start right now by letting you know that we did Winnie Wednesday. Last Wednesday, we did the contest, I got my emails, I got a lot of emails in, it was a wonderful thing, and then I neglected to draw the winning email out of the hat. I just plum forgot to do that. So, uh, before this show is over, we're going to wrap up today's episode by doing the drawing for last week's winner, which uh, was a, a pair of tickets to the VIP spot at the Gateway Cinema and an NCW Life Channel mug. Long story, you don't need to know, I just, I just forgot. That's, I have no excuse, I just didn't, I just forgot. So we're going to do the drawing for last week's uh, winner before this show is over and then we'll do this one as well. Alright, so the prize is this. Yes, we're going to do it again. Uh, it's a super popular prize. It is a pair of uh, tickets to any movie you want to see between now and the end of the year at the VIP spot at the Gateway Cinema out there in Old Station from our friends at Sun Basin Theater. The only way to watch a movie. Uh, big comfortable chairs, nice food, adult beverages, and they always bring top flight Hollywood entertainment to the Gateway. Uh, and here we're going to do it again. We're going to do uh, a pair of tickets. Uh, for the VIP spot, and because I messed up and didn't do the drawing last week, I'm going to throw in some more pies for you. I got not one, not two, but yeah, th oops, that was somebody's email address. I better pick that up. Three, three uh, pies from the Friends Bakery, apple pies, because I've done bad. Send me your emails, winner at ncwlife.com. You want to win the prize? Winner at ncwlife.com. That's how you enter. It's via the email. I will get the email. It's one entry per email address. You know that by now. Uh, don't forget the rules because it's the VIP spot. You have to be at least 21 to win the contest. Also, you must be a very important person. If you're not a very important person, you can't win the contest. Uh, and employees of local telecommunications, solely on broadcasting, and their media families are not eligible. Sorry, Brenda. All right. So, two tickets to the VIP spot. And again, this doesn't expire to the end of the year. You don't have to use it right away. You can wait till one of your favorite movies comes out and, and uh, take a loved one or a date or whoever to the movies. It's on us. And we'll throw in some apple pies as well. Get in your emails. Winner at ncwlife.com. And I will remember to do the drawing today, unlike last week. Um... We're in for a big change in the weather. We've been talking about this. This is well advertised. We are under a wind advisory. It kicks in at noon today. It goes until 9 o'clock tonight. This is an unusually strong uh, system that's coming in, a uh, low-pressure system that's going to fly right in here. The big story is going to be the wind, and it's going to snow on Stevens Pass tonight. Forecast details are coming up. We've got a lot of weather information to talk about. We have a lot of news to talk about. In sports, uh, the Wenatchee Panthers have moved on to the final eight. They're now in the quarterfinals uh, of the State 4A Soccer Championship. They knocked off Tahoma uh, last night 1-0 at Lee Boftel Field at the Apple Bowl. We were there broadcasting it. We'll have highlights as well. The Mariners can't get out of their own way again. Highlights of Mariner baseball. And speaking of sports, in the back half of the program, the Wenatchee Wild are gathering for their annual spring camp. Uh, all of the returning Wenatchee Wild players... Uh, uh, who didn't age out, will be back in town this weekend. Uh, and they're going to get about 40 or so uh, hockey players who have been invited by the Wenatchee Wild organization to try out for the team. It's this weekend. It's open to the public. So we went down to the to the rink, the Weinstein Beverage Rink, at the Town Toyota Center. We talked to Chris Clark, Clarkie, the head coach of the Wenatchee Wild. And you're going to meet Troy Mick, who is the new hockey director. He just moved here to the big city uh, in April, just last month. He's the hockey director. He handles the, the development teams. So you're going to hear from uh, Troy, you're going to hear from Clarkie at the back half of the program. I love talking about when Angie Wild Hockey, so what the heck, we'll have that for you as well. Let's get moving. we got a lot to touch on. Let's take a look at what's going on outside the Wenatchee Valley with our cameras, courtesy of the SkyFi system. High clouds, it's very quiet, light rain, not a lot going on, but again, we got uh, some big weather changes coming 
our way. Yesterday's high, 68 degrees. I thought we were going to get to the normal high of 72. We didn't. It was nice, though. Uh, you can make 13 days in a row now. Uh, when we failed to get to our normal afternoon high, that pattern has gone unabated for well over a month. Camera number two. That's a nice view of the uh, Cougar Ridge camera looking down over the north end of town, the old station industrial park, the Stimil Complex, Omi Gardens, Sunny Slope, and uh, Birch Mountain on the upper right-hand corner of your screen. We spent the day in Leavenworth yesterday. A really good time. Did a lot of interviews. We're going to be airing those over the next few days. I noticed, though, that the Wenatchee River is running really high, really high, as is the Columbia for that matter. It's typical this time of the year, but it seems higher and stronger than normal. I don't know if that was just me or what. Camera number three, we take a view of Rock Island. Look how green that golf course is. And that is a super high camera, way up there. And we have that zoomed way out. That is a really neat view. I like that. We can see the entire hamlet of Rock Island. We can see almost all of Malaga, for that matter. That's PTZ, pan, tilt, and zoom. So we have it zoomed about as far out as that camera will get high above Rock on and stunning view there. And look how green that golf course is. Everybody's yard is green because the weather's been so cool and so wet. And camera number four. Ew, that's Leavenworth, and that's it looks like Leavenworth is getting a pretty good dose of rain. Uh, we had a great time at Leavenworth, really did. Uh, we got to visit the folks at the Wenatchee River Institute, and we went and visited our friend Rona at the Snowy Owl Theater. Her Dangerous Woman production is coming up. Uh, and uh, just a good time. Uh, and the friendly folks in Leavenworth. We saw license plates from New Jersey, British Columbia, Georgia, Florida, uh, Oregon, California. We saw license plates from all over the country. Texas. Uh, a lot of folks were visiting Leavenworth yesterday, which is apt to happen. It's a tourist town. Okay, we have some slides to show from you from the National Weather Service. We have a wind advisory. Starts at noon, goes to 9 o'clock. These are your localized gusts, and there are some locations, of course, who are more susceptible to the wind than others. Uh, for instance, uh, you know, uh, Fancher Heights, Waterville Plateau, if you live in a canyon where the winds can get channeled down and pick up in intensity. So we can see the occasional gust between 40 to 45 miles an hour, and the peak winds will be around 5 o'clock tonight, just in time for the afternoon commute. Uh, the wind advisory goes from noon to 9, as I've already mentioned, but it's going to be windy from noon until all the way till Thursday night into Friday morning. This is not an isolated wind event. It's going to be very, very windy uh, for the next 48 hours or so. Also, for you folks out in the Columbia Basin, you have a blowing dust advisory uh, that also goes from noon today till about 10 o'clock tonight. Uh, so I-90, that strip of I-90 between George and Ritzville right through Moses Lake, pretty poor visibility. If you're heading south to the Tri-Cities, you'll find some blowing dust along the highway. So heads up on that if you're traveling. Uh, visibility could be a bit of an issue, and believe it or not, measurable snow on Stevens Pass tonight. Now, they got a little bit of light snow overnight in the evening hours. It's already gone. It's switched over to rain, and then as this robust low-pressure system and cold front passes through our area, it's going to bring snow to Stevens Pass in the overnight hours, anywhere from three to six inches of snow. Washington Pass, of course, Highway 20, the North Cascades, you're going to get even more snow, but three to six inches of snow on Stevens Pass in the middle of May. That doesn't happen particularly often from the National Weather Service. 62, that's it. Told you it was a cold front. Now, 62 is our normal high for April 18th, not May 18th. Yeah, not only is it going to be very windy and a little bit of rain, but we're going to cool down big time. 40 for the overnight low tonight. Cold air is going to be hanging around all day Thursday. Sunshine, <clears throat> still windy. Windy all day on Thursday. Not quite as windy as today, but still windy. And uh, we're only going to get up to about 60 degrees. Then we warm up a little bit. 67 on Friday. The winds will be diminishing. Saturday will pop up into the lower 70s. We could finally get up to normal by Sunday, which has hadn't happened in a couple of weeks with this long stretch of cool, wet weather. Well, that's going to change on Sunday. And then Monday and Tuesday, we cool down a little bit and things get unsettled. Again, the big story today is the wind. We have a wind advisory that starts at noon today, and it's going to be uh, either breezy, windy, or very windy uh, between noon today all the way into early Friday morning. You're up to date with the weather in one minute. You'll be up to date with the news. It's next. You're watching Wake Up in Anche Valley on the NCW Live channel.
Introducing Alpine Air Man. Because every home needs a superhero to eliminate poor indoor air quality, send inefficient operating equipment packing, and cut high energy bills down to size. For heating or cooling and equipment replacement, turn to the experts and the superheroes at Carrier and Alpine Air. We offer the best deals on high-efficiency carrier products, along with friendly, knowledgeable service and incredible savings to fit your budget. Hi, I'm Katie Joslin, and I'm a pediatrician at CVCH. We know that as new parents, you have a lot of decisions to make. At CVCH, we have a team of caring pediatricians and family medicine providers who love to take care of newborns. As you're making that decision of where you'd like to go, we hope that you'll consider coming to CBCH, where any of the providers you choose would care for your baby as if it was one of their own. High clouds, 48 degrees. We're going for a very windy and cool day today. It's going to be windy tonight. Very cool. On Thursday, we'll get sunshine, but still windy. On Thursday, we calm down. Thursday night, and then we warm up little by little, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. It's 11 minutes after the hour. A Seattle man is charged with multiple criminal counts for allegedly throwing bricks and rocks through the windows of four Upper Valley businesses. The 59er Diner at Coles Corner, the Leavenworth Howard Johnson Hotel, and the Cashmere Valley Bank Branches at Leavenworth and Cashmere all reported finding their windows smashed in the early morning hours of March 27th. Schlein County Sheriff's deputies say video footage shows 55-year-old Donald J. Stanfield driving to each location, retrieving a brick from his vehicle or a rock from the ground and hurling it through a window pane and then driving away. At the diner, the brick struck a beer tap and it caused beer to overflow onto the restaurant floor and eventually into the basement. Prosecutors charged Stanfield by summons with four counts of malicious mischief. Investigators say the damage that he caused, allegedly caused, around 9,200. Dollars. A body found in Walla Walla County last week has been confirmed to be Yaniro Sedeos of Moses Lake, who police say was murdered by her former boyfriend on March 3rd in Moses Lake after celebrating her 30th birthday. Law enforcement and friends and family have been searching for her body since Juan Tarilo Gastelum was arrested on March 10th in Hermiston, Oregon on charges of second-degree rape and second-degree murder in her death. Moses Lake Police said they received information from Gastelum's cell phone data that showed he had been in a remote area in Walla Walla County just off Highway 12 outside the Wallula Junction in the morning that Sedeos was reported missing. Last Thursday evening, searchers found a female body in a sleeping bag covered with tree limbs and leaves. After an autopsy Monday, the Spokane County Medical Examiner confirmed the body to be of Sedeos. Police believe Gastelum killed Sedeos in her Moses Lake apartment and say she was he was seen on video the next morning cleaning out his car and disposing of evidence. A Renton man pleaded guilty yesterday to a charge of child molestation just before the trial was about to begin in Chelan County Superior Court. 55-year-old Mark Darren Starman, he pled guilty to third-degree child molestation, avoiding trial on first-degree charges. Starman admitted to having sexual contact with a 13-year-old girl during a visit to Lake Antioch back in 2007. He was 40 years old at the time. The victim disclosed the incident years later, and Starman was initially charged in 2019. Now, with his plea, Starman is now being held in the Chelan County Jail. He'll be sentenced on June 28th. Prosecutors are recommending 366 days in jail, one year and one day. The COVID-19 pandemic has now killed 1 million Americans, including 231 people in Chelan and Douglas counties. And while hospitalizations and deaths in the area are nowhere near their peak, the region's chief health officer says local cases of COVID-19 are now beginning to trick upward again. COVID still uh, occupies uh, the majority of our epidemiological focus in Chelan Douglas. We're seeing uh, increasing cases in Chelan Douglas as uh, we are across Washington and the uh, broader U.S. Case counts uh, aren't as uh, reliable as they have been because there's such an abundance of home tests that are underreported. Um, but we can follow trends and trends are reliable and we are seeing increases. Um, there are a number of variants um, 
or lineages of uh, Omicron, BA2 is the most predominant right now. Um, it uh, has retained many of the similarities uh, that we welcome in Omicron um, and the um, uh, prevention of spread and complications remains the uh, best strategy. Uh, the increase in cases in, uh, in North Central Washington is primarily driven by Chelan and Douglas counties, um, and it's uh, just starting to see a suggestion that cases are increasing in Grant County and not yet in Okanagan County. Um, here are the internal dashboard numbers for Chelan Douglas. Um, and you can see that uh, we've got a few more cases in the past seven days than uh, the past 14 days. We're watching school outbreaks closely. This data is from uh, statewide schools, and there was an increase in school outbreaks um, in the middle of March following the um, end of masking and some other precautions that were in place. That was to be expected, um, but with the low case numbers, um, we're not seeing as many school outbreaks as we were um, in January and February. Uh, our staff members are responding and supporting schools and helping them with decision making to limit the spread of those cases that are being reported in schools. And lastly, on this Wednesday, Our Valley, Our Future wants your input uh, on Wenatchee Valley's housing crisis, and we got one. The nonprofit Visioning Group has made housing a priority over the last five years. Home seekers, of course, are dealing with skyrocketing home prices and a shortage of available homes and apartments. You can participate in the survey. Go to their website, ourvalleyourfuture.org. The association plans to hold a regional housing summit on June 1st, aimed at those who work in the building industry. You're up to date with what's making news on this Wednesday, and we'll have another newscast for you tonight. At 5 o'clock, 6 o'clock, and 8 o'clock, 10 o'clock, it's on tonight. <laughs> With a preview, here's Grant. Good morning, Dan. Coming up tonight on the NCW Life Evening News, the Wenatchee School District expects smaller enrollment numbers in the coming school years. We'll tell you about that. Morning showers, windy conditions, and cooler weather in our Wednesday forecast. I'll have all the details in your complete North Central Washington weather forecast. And in sports, Eric Granstrom has a ton of results from the state high school soccer, baseball, and softball action from yesterday. He'll also have the latest on the Mariners and the Blue Jays series. That and all the day's news stories coming your way tonight at 5, 6, and 10 on the NCW Life Evening News. We hope to see you then. Dan? Thank you, Grant. Don't forget, if you got a news tip, we'd love to hear from you. We've gotten some pretty big stories, significant stories, by hearing from you, our viewers. Keep up the good work. Get a hold of us via our email address, our Facebook page, or our homepage. When we come back, highlights from round one of the state tournament between the Panthers and the Tahoma Bears. Last night, at leave off the field at the Apple Bowl. And highlights of the Mariners. Sports is one minute away. You're watching Wake Up in Anchee Valley on a witty Wednesday on the NCW Live channel. Ageless Beauty at Chelan Valley Skin Care. Cindy offers the most up-to-date treatments for personalized skin care. If sagging skin or acne scars are some skin challenges for you, Chelan Valley Skin Care offers non-invasive, non-surgical skin care. With up-to-date technology for shorter treatment plans, you'll benefit from Cindy's expertise to help you accomplish your skin care goals. Please stop by their website for details on all their services. Call Cindy today for your free consultation. Twenty minutes after the air, the Wenatchee Panthers advanced to the state quarterfinals with a one-nothing victory over the Tahoma Bears last night at Lee Bofto Field in the Apple Bowl. Tyler Wisen scored on a header in the 29th minute off a free kick from Giovanni Munez for the game's only goal. Tahoma came out in the second half ready to roll, but they could not find the back of the net. 
Eric Granstrom had the call right here on the NCAA Live channel. Ball still alive for Wenatchee. And here's an opportunity with a rifle kick on the way and saved nicely for Tahoma by Cohen Storch. Wow, that was a shot. Dropping back in defense. Collier with it, and then he's tripped, and they're going to call a free kick here for Wenatchee. Wow. Here's the kick ahead by Munoz, and the header, and it's in! Goal for Wenatchee. Tyler Wisen will give the first point of the postseason here for the Panthers, and they take a 1-0 lead. Giovanni Munoz with the assist, just a soft little left footer ahead, and Tyler Wisen was able to get past the bunch, and he scores it here in the 29th minute. Ball stolen away by Tahoma. Here's Villanueva, crossing pass, and the kick goes off the front of the crossbar. Right foot into it, far post they had tried. The header, it's knocked around, still loose, and then finally... Cleared away by Wenatchee. Near side it comes to Daly. Daly crosses it over. Bodies leap into the air. And here's a right-footed kick. Got away from Munguia for a moment. And then he's able to cover. Bears on the attack. The approach. The kick. And fumbled away. And then picked up by Munguia. Oh, my. All these precious moments. And that's going to be the whistle. And the Wenatchee fans rise to their feet in adulation of a Wenatchee win over Tahoma, but boy, give credit to the Bears for really, really turning it around here in the second half. They just could not show the benefits of their efforts here, falling by a score of 1-0 in the first round of the state 4A championships. When you get to this level and you're in the state tournament, the seeding that placed them here doesn't mean anything. Anybody can beat anybody. I thought they had a great match, great game plan. And, uh, you know, there were a lot of nerves on both sides, and it showed. We got one real quality service from Giovanna Munoz to uh, Tyler Wisen for a header on a set piece. And, um, you know, it was just a grind-out ugly win. But sometimes you can't just play flowing, beautiful soccer. As sometimes it's just the way the go game goes. Uh, each goal is a special one for me. Uh, each goal helps the team out, and today it helped out the team a lot. So I'm, I'm thankful for it. I'm thankful for the team. So it was a good goal. Talk about that play. Munoz uh, had the uh, free kick about 20-some yards out and was able to loft that slowly towards you. Did it come to you as slowly as it looked from us up in the box? Uh, you know, I think Gio and I were on the same same page with that one. He was on the same page with Alex in a, uh, last week against Eastmont. So uh, he kind of knew where the ball needed to go, and I was there luckily, and I was able to put it in the net. So, I'm, yeah, I think it was it was tough for me. I'm not the I'm not amazing at headers. But um, you just got to stick your head on it. Panthers will host a quarterfinal matchup on Saturday at Leib off the field of the Apple Bowl. We don't know who they're going to play yet. Issaquah and Puyallup will do battle uh, today, and the winner will take on the Panthers Saturday. Eastmont is on the road today. They're at Bellman Prep for its first round game, 6 o'clock. If the Wildcats win, they'll take on the winner of Chiawana and Newport in the quarterfinals. Bridgeport was able to advance to the first round of the state A-B tournament. They knocked over Columbia White Salmon yesterday 2-0. The Mustangs will play the Bush School Friday in Sammamish. Manson is on the road at Vashon Island. His play-in game is today at 5.45. The winner will take on Cascade in the Apple Bowl on Friday night. Quincy's first round opponent will be determined today in the play-in game between Riverside and Seattle Academy. The Jack Rabbits will host the first round game Friday night at 6 o'clock. The Wenatchee girls softball season continues. They won their play-in game against Ike. They beat the cadets 11-5 to advance to the district 6-4A playoffs on Friday. Wenatchee will take on West Valley, the Rams beating Sunnyside in the other play-in game. Friday's game for Wenatchee will be at West Valley at 5 o'clock. Eastmont's district championship game against Moses Lake at the Sterling Fourplex will be Friday at 5 o'clock. Afraid of softball season came to an end in the district 5-6 and 2A tournament yesterday in Sela. Tigers crushed Prosser in the first game, but then they lost to Ellensburg in the loser out game. The Bulldogs beating West Valley to advance to face Afreda. Othello won the district championship, by the way, with a 4-1 win over Sela. And then playing its third game of the day, Ellensburg advanced to state with a 4-3 win over Sela. That's a little shot of the Mariners, who, by the way, lost again. 3-0. All the action of the game came in the second inning. Seattle had the bases loaded in the top half of the second inning, but they hit into the double play, and then Toronto had the bases loaded in the bottom of the second inning, and George Springer did not hit into a double play. He's been walking too many. A 
fly to shallow right field, and it's down for a base hit. Two runs have scored. Here comes Espinal. He will score. Springer into third, and he's safe. On a bloop, bases clearing triple to give the Blue Jays a 3 to nothing lead. Clutching up once again is George Springer. Didn't get all of that one. Fastball got in on him. Souza was playing deep in right field, and I don't think he got a very good jump on that ball. Here's the 3-2. And a ground ball. Chapman has it. Spins, fires, and the Blue Jays win it. Barrios, Phelps, and Simber combined to shut out Seattle. Julio Rodriguez had two of Seattle's six hits. Logan Gilbert struck out nine over seven innings, and he took the loss. His record falls to four and two. Marco Gonzalez takes the mound today to try to salvage something out of this series. 407 on Root Sports Northwest. Houston continues its winning ways in the American League West. The Astros hammered Boston. Houston, 24 and 13 on the season. Right behind them are the Angels. Even though they lost to Texas last night, Oakland just a game behind Seattle. By the way, the Mariners in their last 20 games are 5 and 15. 5 and 15 in their last 20 games. That's the worst in baseball. And that is sports at 26 minutes after the hour. Our obscure holiday, we're going to show you a picture of my kitchen. There it is. That's my kitchen. That's not my kitchen. But today is National No Dirty Dishes Day. You can celebrate it by either ignoring the dirty dishes in your sink or cleaning all the dirty dishes in your sink. Be, uh, be done with it. Dirty dishes are a part of life. Uh, that's all there is to it. I try to get into the habit of washing my dirty dishes every day uh, when I make my dinner or whatever meal it is I'm making. I like to think and wash the, I don't always, but I try to do my best to wash the dishes as soon as I'm done. I don't have a dishwasher, I gotta wash them by hand, which by the way is better anyway, you get dishes cleaner. And then I get really lazy sometimes and I just go out and buy paper plates and paper spoons and forks and throw my dishes in the garbage when I'm done with it. I'm trying to not do that, but I'm not real good at that. Clean your dishes today. Or not. Go out to eat. Put it off for another day. My kitchen has never looked like that, I'll tell you that much. It's 27 minutes after the hour. Today in history, uh, on this date in 1863, 159 years ago today, the siege of Vicksburg began. Uh, Union forces under the command of uh, Ulysses S. Grant completely surrounded the town of Vicks Vicksburg, Mississippi. They could have just bombarded the heck out of it with cannon and rifle and shot and shell, but Grant said, we got them surrounded. There's no reason to waste all this ammunition. We'll just wait it out. And it worked. For 40 days, Vicksburg simply ran out of food and morale. They were eating horses by the end of this thing. And finally, they surrendered on July the 4th, 1863. Of course, it made General Grant a national hero. And it changed the course of the Civil War. With Vicksburg uh, being defeated and occupied by Union forces that split the Confederacy in two, it was a big event. The siege of Vicksburg began. They just sat around and waited it out. And it worked on this date 159 years ago today. We talked about Brown v. Board of Education overturning Plessy v. Ferguson, which was handed down by the Supreme Court on this date in 1896, separate but equal. We now know, and we probably knew then, that separate and equal just doesn't count, doesn't work. If it's separate, it is inherently unequal. It's as simple as that. The only uh, justice who said so was John Marshall Harlan, who said the Constitution is colorblind. He was right. The other eight were wrong. But he wasn't proven right until 1954. Not one of the better Supreme Court decisions handed down in this state in 1896. Uh, 95 years ago today, on the state in 19... 27. Andrew Kehoe. Andrew Kehoe was the treasurer of the local school board in Bath, Michigan. He was also ran for town clerk. Didn't win. And on the morning of May 18th, 1927, Andrew Kehoe murdered his wife. And then he burned down his farm. And then he detonated enough dynamite under the north wing of the local elementary school that 38 students and six teachers were killed immediately. And he wasn't even done then 
when the first responders showed up, Kehoe, who was watching all of this from his pickup truck off in the distance, drove up in his pickup truck and detonated a bunch of dynamite in his truck, which killed him, four others, and wounded 56 first responders. Andrew Kehoe, in his murder-suicide, blamed high taxes. He said, I can't pay my farm taxes and they're going to foreclose on my farm. So instead he killed a whole bunch of people who had nothing to do with him. Happened on this date in 1927. 42 years ago today, boom, Sunday morning, May 18th, 1980. I remember hearing the explosion. The footage is still stunning, even though I've seen it probably a thousand times. Here it goes. The largest landslide ever recorded the entire north side of Mount St. Helens slides away. The eruption occurs, 57 people die, most of their bodies never recovered. Three billion dollars in damages. Here is ABC's World News Tonight from May 18th, 1980. Most of the residents around the base of Mount St. Helens have already been evacuated. But a few have refused to leave, including 84-year-old Harry Truman, who says the earthquake preceding this morning's eruption was the strongest he's felt so far. Truman, who is not related to the former president, but is just as feisty, says he's lived here 54 years and is not about to leave. He's got enough bourbon and coke and food, he says, to stick it out a long time. Mount St. Helens, for 123 years it was dormant, but today the volcano exploded with a powerful force that turned daylight to dark. Tonight, the death toll from the explosion has reached at least seven. Tom Schell reports. Mount St. Helens literally blew her top this morning and has been belching smoke and ash ever since. There are unconfirmed reports of lava flowing on the mountain. The volcano was over 9,700 feet high, but lost an estimated 700 feet today. At least five people have been killed and many others are missing. The smoke and ash is covering a wide area of the Pacific Northwest, as we can see in this infrared satellite photo. The cloud of ash extends from Mount St. Helens eastward across the Idaho Panhandle into Montana. In Yakima, Washington this morning, 85 miles north of Mount St. Helens, it was like midnight. Street lights came on automatically and many cars stalled when the ash clogged carburetors. Walls of mud slid into the Toodle River, sending a 20-foot high torrent of water rushing downstream. A warehouser logging camp was wiped out and the logs swept downriver. The debris took out one bridge and forced the closing of the Interstate 5 bridge for several hours. It is feared that some people could have been swept away by the floodwaters, but the five confirmed deaths were blamed on the heavy ash and the sulfuric gases that poured out of the volcano. A team from National Geographic reported from the north side of the volcano that Spirit Lake appeared to be boiling and the Spirit Lake Lodge was flattened. That's the home of Harry Truman, the 83-year-old caretaker who has refused to leave the mountain. Today, we got the first close-up look at Mount St. Helens since the massive eruption Sunday morning. This is the area that blew out. It is the slope that had been bulging for several days. The force of the blast flattened everything in its path. These logs were a forest until 8.30 a.m. Sunday. The landscape is almost colorless because of the heavy coating of volcanic ash. This is the bottom of the Tootle River, the water cut off by a 200-foot-high mud flow that acts as a natural dam. Scientists say the water will soon come over the dam, probably causing major flooding downstream. If the dam bursts, it could cause flooding at the towns of Kelso and Longview, Washington, 40 miles away, where 50,000 people live. Silt and mud that got into the Tootle River from the eruption has been carried into the Columbia River, making it too shallow for shipping. At least a dozen freighters are stranded in the ports of Vancouver, Washington, and Portland, Oregon. Mount St. Helens is continuing to send up clouds of ash that are drifting to the east, dropping a heavy layer of ash over a large area. If you lived in the Pacific Northwest, you will never forget Sunday, May 18th, 1980. And finally, 17 years ago today, at the age of 40, Randy Johnson of the Arizona Diamondbacks becomes the oldest pitcher in Major League history to throw a perfect game. Here's how it ended. 9.49 now in Atlanta, 6.49 in Arizona, and a 2-2 to Perez. Swing and a miss, and Randy Johnson, at 40 years young, 
has thrown a perfect game, the seventh <laughs> in National League history. Oh, look at his teammates out there mobbing him, Tommy. Oh, that is awesome. What a way to start a road trip, baby. <laughs> Doesn't get much better now, oh, does it? I've never seen that before. I want to go down there and jump on it. Come on, Tommy, let's go down there. 13 strikeouts tonight for Randy Johnson. And needless to say, a spectacular performance by one of the game's all-time greats. Way to go, big unit on the state in 2004. Let's wrap it up with birthdays. His Holiness, Pope John Paul II, was born 102 years ago today, died at the age of 84 in 2005. The first non-Italian pope in 455 years. He visited over 130 countries, and there isn't much more than 130 countries on this planet. His Holiness, born in the state in 1920. Pernell Roberts, Adam Cartwright on Bonanza. We chased Lady Luck till we finally struck Bonanza. With a gun and a rope and a half full of hope, we planted our family tree. He was the oldest one, the last surviving cast member, even though he himself is gone and has been gone for 12 years. Pernell Roberts, born in the state in 1928. Mr. October, Reggie Jackson. His regular season batting average was 262. His batting average in the World Series, 357. That's how you get to be Mr. October. 11 division winners, six pennant winners, five world championships. Happy 76th to Reggie Jackson. And George Strait is 70. Happy birthday to George. He owns this remarkable record, which I don't think will ever be broken. He, is, he has the most number one songs, the most top five songs, and the most top ten songs in the history of music. Of music of any kind. A phenomenal record. He's 70 years old today. And Tina Fey, one of my favorites, he is 52 years old today and going strong. Going to take a break. Mike McNaughty has an opinion about Bruce Springsteen. And then my conversation with Chris Clark and Troy Mick of the Wenatchee Wild. Camp is this weekend, and you can go check out the next generation of Wild players. It's all coming up. It's Winning Wednesday. Don't forget that, too. And it's Wake Up Wenatchee Valley. Beaver Valley Lodge in Leavenworth is located on 50 acres set in a quiet country atmosphere with historic farm feel and charm. It's sure to make your stay one to remember. Beaver Valley Lodge offers a variety of overnight accommodations for groups large and small that range from rooms for two to four people to entire vacation homes with all the space you'll need for a reunion, a retreat, or a wedding. Book your stay at Beaver Valley Lodge where you'll come as a guest and leave as a friend. NCW Life Channel is your local TV station. We provide the latest news from around North Central Washington weeknights at 5, 6, and 10 o'clock with Grant Olson. If it's happening in your neighborhood, we have you covered with a staff of reporters who are always on call. Grant will also keep you up to date on the latest weather, and Eric Grantstrom covers sports. It's all on your local TV station, the NCW Life Channel. Uh, my name is Brian Thorpe. Uh, I own Global Car Care in Wenatchee and have been here for about 25 years. Brian started Global Car Care as Brian's Automotive Alternative on Arondo Street. Some customers were following Brian since uh, Brian's Automotive time. No, we're just grateful to be part of this community. This is where I grew up. We want to do our part to be a valuable part of this community. We want to thank you for trusting our business for 25 years. Are you dealing with a pest or weed issue and you just don't know what to do? We use the best pest control methods approved for areas with kids and pets. Whether it's rats, mice, ants, or spiders, or something else altogether. We provide the coaching and solutions you're looking for. And you can know that your dollars are supporting a local, family-owned and operated business. Allow us to help you get back to living healthy and pest-free. Harvest Valley Pest Control. Hey, this is Mike Mad Dog Magnotti, and everybody is entitled to my opinion. Now, Bruce Springsteen is a Jersey boy, and that's pretty cool. But his song, Glory Days, always kind of bothered me. It, it, I always thought it was a 
d depressing, particularly the line, well, time slips away and leaves you with nothing, mister, but boring stories to tell of. Uh, now, this is my goal. You know, I, I never want my glory days to be behind me. I always want them to be something ahead. No matter how old we get, I think we ought to need to keep stretching ourselves, keep trying to top the good stuff of our past. Glory days? Maybe. Sometime tomorrow. This is Mike, Mad Dog Magnati, and that's my opinion. At DA Davidson in Wenatchee, they believe your investment success begins with a personalized plan. A plan that is the roadmap you need to navigate your way to living your best years in retirement. D.A. Davidson can help you create a plan so you can take the time to enjoy the finer things in life. Let the financial advisors at D.A. Davidson help chart your retirement future today. has really um, been a great partnership between Succession and NCW Life. It's not always easy to sit in front of a, a camera or a, a microphone, but um, you guys have made it a really nice process. Things have changed in the motorsports industry. Short supply and high demand have emptied showrooms. But what hasn't changed are the experts at Doghouse Motorsports. They are here to help you reserve the machine of your choice. Stop by and check out the latest 2022 Husqvarna motorcycles, UBCO, and intense electric vehicles, and other new additions to the Doghouse Motorsports family of high quality products. Over the last year and a half, the industry has absolutely changed, but the Doghouse is still your best option for all your power sports needs. As AmeriCorps members and volunteers, we do more than talk about our core values. We take action and commit to making our community stronger. At AmeriCorps, my commitment to equity gives every student a strong start. Our compassion brings food and friendship to neighbors in need. My determination protects Sparks in my community. Now more than ever, your community needs you. What's at your core? Learn more at AmeriCorps.gov. I'm John Divis from Wenatchee Dental Arts, and I like to think myself as a comprehensive dentist. We are an office that treats people comprehensively for their dental problems. We do a lot of general dentistry in a broad sense. We don't send everything out. Uh, things that we have the ability to do in the office, we like to keep in the office and under one roof and keep things as complication-free as possible. You can come to one place and have all their dental needs taken care of. Welcome back to Wake Up in Anchee Valley. Whenever we talk wild hockey, we're usually up in the Loge section of the Town Toyota Center, but instead we're here at the Weinstein Beverage Rink because this place will be the place to be on the 20th, 21st, and 22nd. People say, it's May, wild hockey. Yeah, wild hockey. Chris Clark, uh, affectionately known by his friends as Clarky. What do your enemies call you? Clarky. Clarky. <laughs> We've got to work on your I nickname, by the way. It's a great nickname, but it's kind of obvious, isn't it? Yeah, well, I don't think a lot of people even know my first name, so. Really? Clarky has just stuck since I was. You can borrow my nickname if you okay, want. Okay, we'll have to learn, learn yeah. about that off yeah, air. No, maybe. it's a great nickname. Mr. Wonderful. Is Mr. What they Wonderful, call it. all right. Troy, introduce yourself to our television family. Well, my name is Troy Mick. I'm proud to be part of the Wenatchee community now. I've been here since the beginning of March, and I'm the new hockey director here for the Wenatchee Development Programs and also coaching the 18s and 16s. I'm looking forward to it, and it's going to be a great season. Before we get too deep into the conversation, the Fred Page Cup is going right now. The finals are going on right now as we tape this. Penticton leads Nanaimo uh, two games to none. Clarkie, we saw this coming in, in January. These are the two, the class of the league, and they're on a collision course, and sure enough, uh, Penticton and Nanaimo uh, are playing each other for the Fred Page Cup. No surprise there. No, I think uh, obviously, especially if you just looked at the playoffs alone, uh, going into the Fred Page Cup finals, both teams were on a 12 game winning streak. Uh, Penticton was 12 and one overall. Nanaimo was 12 and 0 overall. Uh, so two, two very proud franchises, uh, two franchises playing very well. Obviously now Penticton has a two nothing lead, but um, I would envision that that one has, a, has the potential with the way both teams are playing to be, to be a long series. But uh, as we're learning here in hockey, it's been uh, a lot of, lot of uh, 
crazy outcomes and uh, I guess I wouldn't be surprised by anything at this point. Of course, uh, Wenatchee uh, left in the first round, but they took him to seven games and the goal always here, always, is Fred Page Cup. That's the underlying goal that every team has going in. But Wenatchee has a, has a better chance to have it than most teams, don't they? Oh, I, think, I think we're obviously one of those franchises that we have a very uh, high standard in what we want uh, to accomplish each year. We knew coming in this past year that we were going to be a young team having not played the year before because of COVID. Um, I was very excited about our group and, and what we were able to accomplish, obviously being one of the youngest teams in all of junior hockey. Uh, we definitely played our, our best hockey at the end of the year. Unfortunately, we ran into a pretty, pretty good team in Salmon Arm uh, who got the best of us in Game 7, but you know what, that could have gone either way as well, and uh, we have a lot of things to build off coming into this year. You mentioned the youngest team in the league by far, and a team that didn't get a chance to play last year, so there's no real gelling or uh, that kind of deal, but now you got a whole bunch of those guys who will be right back here in town this weekend. Yeah, we have our final camp coming up this weekend. All our veterans will be back, uh, along with about uh, 60 other kids. We'll have a four-team camp. Uh, starting Friday morning, bright and early, 9 a.m., uh, all the kids will play three games. From there, we're going we're gonna to get down to two All-Star games. Once we get down to two All-Star games, we'll do that Saturday night. And then Sunday morning, we'll have one final All-Star game um, to determine who we're going to invite back for training camp at the beginning of September. So you mentioned the 19 returners and then the 40 other skaters. And how was that decision made? Is that, when, uh, is that where you come in? Uh, no, I'm, uh, like I said, I'm strictly involved with the development program here. I want to develop the players for Clarkey and the Wild program. And so obviously I like to come in and watch the players that are coming in because I haven't been here a long time and just lend my support any way I can to the big boys. How do players end up on your radar for the, for the Wolverines and the, and the Wolves and that group? How do, how, how do you find those guys? It's basically all season long. Whenever we play against other teams, we go to other tournaments throughout North America. And this will be our first year we're going to be able to go back into Canada. So, you know, I want to get the younger players in. I want them, their ultimate goal is to play for the Wild and the BCHL. So, you know, through connections, other coaches, family advisors, agents, and really just the Wild program itself. The, the Wenatchee Wild the Junior A program is one of the top programs in all of North America. So we actually get a lot of phone calls and emails just because of the facilities, the communities, uh, just the fans, the billet families here. There's so much to be proud of to come here and play, and hopefully the ultimate goal is to play for Clarkey. I'm guessing it's not a real hard sell. I mean, you mentioned development and coaching and facility. This, this, this organization has all of those things in spades, do they not? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think at the end of the day, there's so much competition out there, so you got to do your job, and you got to have proven results of moving players. And, you know, I look at last year with Logan Nagy, uh, Nago playing in the last few playoff games. Uh, we use a lot of our players for practices during the season. They get game opportunities depending on injuries and stuff. So uh, the proof is there. You work hard, you're going to be rewarded within this program. You're no stranger to the league and no stranger to Bliss Littler. You, Bliss had a chance to grab you come April and he got you. What, what, what got you here? Um, I'm originally from British Columbia. Obviously, I know nothing but great things with Bliss and Clarkey and the program and Tom and Lee and all the guys that are involved with the program. So it was kind of a, a situation where I was in Philadelphia Hockey Club the last two years. I was looking to get closer to home and, you know, I'm four hours from home. But more importantly, I got a program that really stresses values and character. And, and that's so important nowadays in the hockey. You know, unfortunately, sometimes I get caught up in the wins and losses. But you know what? It's about developing on our youth programs and the development through there hopefully leads them through the wild program and they've done it year after year year after year and when uh, bliss kind of contacted me end of december and said there might be an opportunity here you know what lo and behold i was in a u-haul truck for 40 hours sleeping in truck spots and i ended up making it here in march in time for the playoffs for the wild uh, what was the learning curve? Not much, I take it, because of your experience and your background? Did no, I think it's just a matter of, of learning the program, learning the rules and regulations, and the hockey director, so I look after the 18s, the 16s, the 14s, and 12s, so we just had our 12U tryouts here this weekend, and it's amazing how good these kids are at this young age, and, you know, to be able to give back to the community is kind of the, the foundation of what the Wild want to do. Uh, you know, we're definitely going in the right direction, and being able to go back into Canada to play a lot of the teams up there because it's been tough with COVID and the border restrictions and now for the most part they're opening. So I'm looking forward to a, a great year, looking for a great year within the wild and it all starts this weekend with the big boys here this weekend in Wenatchee. How do you, how do you assess the talents of say like a 14 year old kid? What are you looking for when, when some, some kid goes, now this guy can go places, this guy can play for Clarkey and maybe go even farther up the ladder. What, is, what, 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 
What do you look for in, in, that, in that department? For me, it's about skating. I think skating, it's not about size no more. I think you got to have the heart like you're 6'2", but you got to be able to skate and you got to be able to compete. And then more importantly, it's talking to the kids and the families and make sure they're outstanding people. And, and, you know, I always say you can't go to Walmart and Target and buy heart or character. That's earned. So those are things behind the bench the coaches are looking for. How do they present themselves? You know, do they keep the dressing room clean after games? And, you know, it, it's really important now that, uh, you know, when they go play for the Wild, and then they're going to pr- produce those guys that go on to the NCAA. No one's giving you a $200,000, $250,000 scholarship unless you're a good person and a good human being. And that's such a draw with the Wild family here. They are all good people here from the office staff to the water boys. Uh, it's a pretty special place to play. You keep using the word family, and that's really what it is. But the families themselves of the players play, take, play a huge role. A lot of people don't know the sacrifices that mom and dad are making if a 12, 13-year-old kid says, I want to play hockey and I want to play as much as I can. Everybody has to play into that equation, don't they? Absolutely. And, you know, they do their due diligence as well. With the Internet, they can find out just as much as we can probably find out about them. So, you know, our history speaks for the South as far as development, moving players on. And the Wenatchee program at the Junior A level, again, is one of the top in North America. So we do our due diligence on, on families, too. We don't want the parents that are going to be, you know, overzealous and try to be involved. You know, they're trusting us to develop their, you know, young teenagers. That Some are just heading the puberty stage some have got full beards at uh, 17 so it becomes a real tough challenge that but you're just looking for people that want to improve want to develop and willing to pay the price for each other uh and this is one of it's funny you think about it the canada is an exception because canada is such a hockey mad country but here in the here in the united states there there, even in the pacific northwest there are cities that are twice the size of wenatchee that don't even have one year-round rink we have a year-round rink in between september and hopefully june we got two rinks, and that's 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 important, isn't it, Clarky? Yeah, I mean, we're so blessed to have such a beautiful facility here. Um, the Town Toyota Center, their staff, they take such good care of uh, not only the Wild, but the development teams, Waha. Um, they take a ton of pride in making sure that we have one of the nicest buildings, not only in our area, but the entire state. And uh, you see it when the kids walk in here, come this weekend, their eyes will get as big as they can. Um, when they see this rink and then they're going to go next door and see the facility that we get to call home every weekend or every week and uh where we are we're truly blessed and um we're very lucky to have such a great facility we need to talk about billet families uh critically important to the wild family overall these kids need a place to sleep they need a bed they need food talk about uh billet families for wild players oh they're they're vital not only for the wild but for the development teams we need uh 65 beds a year between the wild the 18s and the 16s, and uh, you can't run a successful program without quality billet families. And we've been so blessed since uh, 2008 to have families that open up their homes and do it for the right reasons. And um, without that, you just you don't have the success you have as a, as a franchise. Because let's face it, they're with those families a lot more than they're worth us as coaches. <clears throat> um, they spend a lot of time there, and the and the quality people that we have that open up their homes. Um, just to, to make these kids feel like they are at home is, is vital, and we're always looking for more. One last question for uh, uh, Chris Clark, whose new nickname is now Mr. Wonderful, I might add. The second. To you. You're the first. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. I'll be I the like second. <laughs> okay, people on the, uh, the, you, you mentioned the camp, 20th, 21st, 22nd, with the big, with the big games over the weekend. Can people come up and watch? Can it open to the public? Absolutely. Open to the public. Um, that's, a, that's a huge part for us. As we know that come uh, Saturday, this place is going to be packed and rocking, and for a lot of these kids, uh, that haven't been here before, it's going to be the most fans they've probably ever played in front of. And so uh, it's always a special time, especially when we get around the All-Star Games, where uh, the building will be packed and ruckus, and uh, be, the, the Wild Faithful will come out loud and proud. And please do come out. We'll have a, a schedule available on our website for this weekend. So uh, whether you can check out one of the games, or I know some people will be here for all of them, uh, we can't wait to see the Wild Faithful um, loud and proud this weekend. You know it. Nice meeting you, and welcome back to the Pacific Northwest. I wish you didn't bring your British Columbia weather with you, but (laughs) don't worry. It gets nicer. Thank you very much. So I'm told. Uh, Mr. Wonderful, part two, and I'm Dan Coos Clark. It's always good to see you. Go wild. You're watching Wake Up in Anchee Valley. We'll be right back.
If you are looking for dependable car service and repair, visit the good guys at Quick Lube and Tune. They've been keeping cars and trucks in the Wenatchee Valley running smooth for 35 years. Quick Lube and Tune is your hometown shop for a 10-minute oil change, complete tune-ups, alignments, brakes, mufflers, air conditioning service, and more. Get more life out of your vehicle by bringing it to the local guys you can trust at Quick Lube and Tune on South Wenatchee Avenue. Summertime is almost here, and that means that Wenatchee Applesonic Baseball is right around the corner. Come spend your summer nights at Paul Thomas Senior Stadium and root on the Apple Sox. Apple Sox Baseball is family-friendly and affordable, with tickets starting as low as $7. Come on out to opening day on June 6th, sponsored by Ag Supply, as the Apple Sox open up a seven-game homestand to begin the summer. Wenatchee Apple Sox Baseball, celebrating summer one inning at a time. Attention RVers and campers, there's a huge RV liquidation event going on now at Click It RV of Moses Lake. Click It RV of Moses Lake must make room for new inventory arriving daily. There's a huge selection of top quality RVs that must be liquidated to make room for new arrivals. You're going to want to be at this event. Get to Click It RV Moses Lake's huge liquidation event. Get to Click It RV now. Are you going to be mad, bro? You probably already are. Get the best deals anywhere at Click It RV of Moses Lake. We guarantee it. Okay, uh, if you were watching uh, the top of the show when we began, I my mea culpa was we did the contest last week for the VIP spot tickets for the movies and the mug, and I forgot to do the drawing last Wednesday. It got away from me. It's just as simple as that. So before we get into today's winning Wednesday prize and get your drawings in, we got to do the drawing for last week's prize, okay? Because I forgot. So here we go. Going to mix them all up here. Here we go. Da, 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 da. Sorry about that, folks. So the winner of last week's prize, which I'm now revealing today, is, and again, this is for the mug and the VIP tickets, is uh, Jim. Jim and uh, I believe Ann. Yeah, okay. Way to go. I'll get a hold of you. I'll send you an email. Again, I apologize for neglecting to do I just forgot. It's a long story. Wednesday, last Wednesday got away from me. So VIP spot, mug, go to Jim and Ann. And now we have this week's prize, which is a pair of tickets to the VIP spot from our friends at Gateway Theater. You know what this is. This is the uh, uh, 21 and older. Uh, big, comfortable chairs, top flight movies. Uh, they bring you your food. You can order cocktails. They'll bring them in. Adult beverages, whatever the case may be. Uh, two tickets to that. And because I need to make up for not doing it last week, I got not one, not two, but three. Count them three. Franz fruit pies, which expired yesterday. So you eat them, you're taking a chance. A little disclaimer there on that. So. Get in your emails, winner at ncwlife.com. I promise I will not forget to do the drawing today, all right? I'll do them later on. Winner at ncwlife.com. That's how you enter. It's one entry per email address, so you can't enter over and over again on the same email address. We keep track of these things. Because it's the VIP spot, you got to be at least 21. You have to be a very important person. And employees of local telecommunications and solely on broadcasting are not eligible. Sorry, Mike. All right, winner at ncwlife.com. We will do the drawing later on today to make up for my boo-boo last week from the National Weather Service. A wind advisory begins at noon today. It's raining lightly outside of our studios. It's 50 degrees. Wind, a lot of wind, a very strong upper level low pressure system. The kind of that we don't see in the middle of May is coming and it's going to bring in some serious wind and some cool temperatures. Very windy today. Localized gusts as you can see there. In the Wenatchee Valley, 40 miles an hour, a distinct possibility. The peak wind gusts, by the way, 
they think will be around 5 o'clock tonight. But it's going to be windy this afternoon, tonight, pretty much all day Thursday, for that matter, from the National Weather Service. Real quickly, here you go. 62, lots of wind. 60 is all we're going to get to uh, on Thursday with still windy conditions, but not a bad weekend coming your way. And that is it for us. Have a great Wednesday. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.